dive into God's Word, dig a little deeper, discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, and today we are beginning the next to last chapter in the book of Daniel. That is Daniel chapter 11. Our title today is From North and South to the Beautiful Land. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the gift of life. We thank you for the ability to study your word for the desire and interest that you give us to do these things. We realize that without these gifts from you, without your Holy Spirit's promptings in our life, we would have no desire to know you better. We would have no desire to read your word, uh, certainly no desire to give our lives to you. So we thank you for these things. And we ask today, as we try to always do, that you would send your Holy Spirit to guide and direct us in our study of your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's start by saying this, Daniel 11 is a challenging chapter because its final verses have not yet been completely fulfilled and because the spirit of prophecy does not provide a clear, explicit interpretation. It's best to avoid dogmatic positions on the exact interpretation of the last five verses, especially. However, this does not mean that this chapter should not be studied. On the contrary, it contains deep truths that must be uncovered, understood, and lived out in the daily life. If we fail to do this, we will be among those carried away in the whirlwind predicted in Daniel 11, verse 40. I like to begin today by just making an observation about something that Daniel and the angels say regarding this prophecy in Daniel chapter 11, and that is that This is the truth. Um, First of all, let me say this as well. We made this point last week, but uh, uh, Daniel chapters 10, 11, and 12 together form this last prophecy in the book of Daniel. So we are really just continuing our study of the final prophecy in Daniel that we began last week, and we will continue and complete that next week with Daniel chapter 12. Okay, here's the observation about uh, this being the truth. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 1, he introduces this final line of prophecy this way. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar, and the thing was true. And then he adds this, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. So Daniel, the very first thing he says about this prophecy is that this is uh, truth. This thing was true. He also makes a point to mention that the time appointed was long. And the third thing he says in Daniel 10 verse 1 is that he had understanding of the vision. Now it's interesting that he uses the Hebrew word mara for vision. And if you joined us a couple of weeks ago, we saw that the word Mara in Daniel chapter 9, which is translated as vision, refers specifically to the part of the vision in Daniel chapter 8 that deals with the time prophecy of the 2300 days. Uh, So in other words, the Hebrew word Mara here in Daniel chapter 9 and 8 focuses especially on Daniel 8, 14 with the 2300 days. Daniel begins this last prophecy by saying that this vision of Daniel 11 um, is true, the time appointed is long, and in using the word vision, he again uses that same word, the Hebrew word mara, which ties us back to the 2300 days. So Daniel is making some important connections with things earlier in his prophecies or with the previous prophecies that he had seen, and it will do us well to make those same connections as we study Daniel chapter 11. Uh, If you have read through this chapter before, you know that uh, it's long, it's very detailed, and um, it could be easy to get lost in those details and to miss the big point. And it seems here in Daniel 10 verse 1 that Daniel is trying to show us what the big point is. 
First of all, it reveals truth. It, it deals with things at the end of time, or at least far in the future. And in some way, it connects with the cleansing of the sanctuary, the heavenly sanctuary, in Daniel uh, chapter 8, verse 14. We'll see how these things play out as we continue our study this week. The angel um, reinforces or, or uh, repeats Daniel's um, explanation that this is true. In Daniel 10, verse 21, the angel says, I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And um, it's almost as if the angel is uh, directing Daniel's attention to uh, the scripture. Of course, Daniel was not written down when Daniel received these things. And so the angel must be referring to other portions of scripture which Daniel would have had access to and been aware of. In other words, you know, writings of the earlier prophets in the uh, Old Testament. And finally, when the vision itself starts, the angel says this in Daniel 11, verse 2, and now I will show thee the truth. And then he begins. So three times we are told that these things are truth. And we are going to see this week that um, this is true on a couple of levels. Not only is the vision true, you know, it has been and it is being fulfilled, it will be fulfilled, but its core message deals with truth at the most fundamental level, and it deals with the plan of salvation, um, the character of God, and God's purpose and plan for every single human being. It's a vision truly of cosmic proportions, and its core message deals with the truth of salvation, and we'll see that as it plays out today or this week. Now, there are only a few uh, direct statements in the spirit of prophecy regarding Daniel chapter 11, and I'd like to read two of those uh, right now. The first one is found in Testimonies to the Church, volume 9, page 14, and uh, we read this. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. The prophecy of the 11th chapter of Daniel has nearly reached its complete fulfillment, Soon, the scenes of trouble spoken of in the prophecies will take place. This is kind of a general uh, statement, you know, saying that the prophecy is true, it's being fulfilled, it's about to be finished and completed. Uh, It's very interesting that, uh, or appropriate, that she starts that statement by saying that the world is stirred with the spirit of war. Again, if you have read through Daniel chapter 11, it's describing one war after another throughout human history. Um, And uh, another similar statement made by Ellen White is found, um, well, it's in a couple of places, Maranatha, page 25. It was originally published in Review and Herald on November 24, 1904. And here we read, The judgments of God are in the land. The wars and rumors of wars, the destruction by fire and flood, say clearly that the time of trouble, which is to increase until the end, is very near at hand. We have no time to lose. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. So two similar statements referring to Daniel chapter 11 here in the spirit of prophecy. And as you can see, um, they're both fairly general in their uh, explanation of Daniel chapter 11. Uh, Three aspects of the prophecy in Daniel 11 will receive our uh, focused attention this week. And those three things are the beautiful land, the covenant, and the abomination of desolation. We will look at briefly tomorrow the king of the north and the king of the south. But beyond that, our focus will not be on the king of the north and the king of the south. Now, these are both important elements of the prophecy. However, uh, at least in our study, they are going to be secondary to the chapter's core message. We will suggest a personal and spiritual application of the prophecy, one that we believe does not contradict with nor preclude interpretations that focus more heavily on the two kings. Um, We should also note that the titles of this week's lessons are going to differ from the titles given in the Bible study guide. And the reason we have done this is so that we can focus especially uh, more on the beautiful land, the covenant, 
and the abomination of desolation than does the Bible study guide. So uh, hopefully by studying the lesson study uh, as well as these uh, Bible study guides, you'll get a deeper uh, uh, view of this prophecy. Well, let's uh, look at a few verses here as we lay the foundation for our study of Daniel chapter 11. I'm going to begin by reading Daniel 11, uh, chapter 11, verses 2 and 3, and then I will jump to chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Remember, these chapters all form uh, the prophecy together. Um, Here is verse 2. And now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength through his riches he shall stir up all against the realm of Grisha. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. Uh, The angel specifically mentions Persia and Greece as the first two empires or uh, world powers that are mentioned in the prophecy. This, of course, lines up the prophecy of Daniel 11 and 12 uh, in parallel with the earlier prophecies of Daniel chapter 2, chapter 7, and chapter 8. The prophecy ends with a description of very final events and the second coming. So reading now from Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And then verse 2 of chapter 12 says this. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And so again, similarly to Daniel chapter 2, chapter 7, we see that the prophecy ends with a description of the second coming. Here we have uh, the resurrection made mention of. This is new. This is one of the added aspects of this prophecy. So the basic contour of Daniel 11 is no different than that of the three earlier lines of prophecy in Daniel chapter 2, chapter 7, and chapter 8. Um, And the primary objective of this repetition throughout Daniel seems to be to explain what happens just before Christ's second coming. Uh, Indeed, Daniel chapter 11, verses 40 through Daniel 12, verse 2, contains a detailed description of events that occurred during the time of the end, beginning in the year 1798 and ending at Christ's second coming. And we will be looking uh, deeply at those verses tomorrow. In regards to what happens just before Christ's second coming, Daniel 7, 8, and 11, uh, again, add to the basic outline found in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel 7 shows that the judgment takes place after the little horn's rule and before Christ's return. Daniel 8 reveals that the judgment involves a work of cleansing in the heavenly sanctuary. And as we will see this week, uh, Daniel chapter 11 focuses on the practical result that Christ's cleansing work in the heavenly sanctuary must have in our lives if we will escape the abomination of desolation. It's a fascinating study. Friends, it's a life-changing study, just as any study of Scripture can be and should be. And I look forward to going through this chapter with you this week. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we hope that you've been blessed by this time spent in God's Word. I know that I have. Just like to make mention, if you have just joined our podcast for the first time uh, today, that you can find study guides and teacher helps on our website, that is at www.pathwaytoparadise.org. Uh, just follow the links for deeper there on the home page, and uh, you can find those resources. Thank you, God bless, and please join us again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.